It's impossible. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to comment on that, or should we come comment after the break? No, we we, we have a, we have some time. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, do you want me to comment on the first thing with Mary, or did you want to? Either way, either way. Uh, well, yeah. As far as what the Quran says, if you go to chapter three, verses thirty-three to thirty-six of the Quran. In fact, let me just give the references. For those listening, uh, you can write this down and you can go back and uh, check these references and verify whether we've quoted them accurately. Chapter 3, Surah Al-Miran, chapter 3, verses 33 to 36. Uh, Surah Al-Maryam, chapter 19, verse 28. Chapter 19, verse 28. And Surah Al-Tahrim, uh, chapter 66, verse 12. Let me repeat it one more time. Chapter 3, verses 33 to 36. Uh, chapter 19, verse 28 and chapter 66 verse 12 in those three references Mary the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ the mother of the eternal son of God is said to be the daughter of Imran the sister of Aaron and that her mother is the wife of Imran let me read the passages so that you can see uh, that this is what the Quran says in chapter 3 of the Quran verses 33 to 36 Allah chose Adam Noah the family of Abraham and the family of Imran the family of Imran above the alameen, meaning mankind and jinns. And then it says, offspring one of the other, and Allah is the all-hearer and the all-knower. Remember when the wife of Imran, Imran's wife, right, said, O oh my Lord, I have vowed to you what the, what the child that is in my womb to be dedicated for your services. So accept this from me. Verily you are the all-hearer, the all-knowing. Then when she delivered her child, she said, O oh Lord, I have delivered a female child. So the wife of Imran gives birth to a daughter. And Allah knew better what she delivered. And the male is not like the female. A very curious statement. The male is not like the female. And I have named her Maryam, Mary, the blessed mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now the Quran doesn't say the blessed mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But this is who it's supposed to be. And I seek refuge with you for her and for her offspring from Satan the outcast. So now the wife of Imran gives birth to the daughter of Imran, Mary. Chapter 19, verse 28. When Mary conceived and gave birth to Jesus as a virgin, no husband, the people looked at her and with a child and they were shocked to see her with the child because they knew she wasn't married. And they say to her, O sister of Aaron, Ya Ukhta Harun, O sister of Aaron. So her mother is the wife of Imran. She's the sister of Aaron. Right? Your father was not a man who used to commit adultery, nor your mother was an unchaste woman. How could you do this? They thought, God forbid, that she conceived out of wedlock. And then chapter 66, verse 12. And Mary, Maryam, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her private part, and we breathe into it of our spirit, right? And it says she also believed and confirmed the scriptures, and she was one of those obedient to Allah. So notice, her mother is the wife of Imran. She's a sister of Aaron. And she's the daughter of Imran. According to the Old Testament, Moses had a sister named Maryam. Exodus chapter 15 verse 20. Moses had a brother named Aaron. Moses' father, his name was Amram. So notice, we do find a Mary who is a sister of Aaron, the daughter of Amram. But that's in the Old Testament and she's the sister of Moses. How can the sister of Moses, the sister of Aaron, the daughter of Amram, be the mother of Jesus when Jesus lived at least uh, 1500 years when I say lived I should say it, you know Jesus became flesh at least 1500 years after Moses had died because if this is true then that means Moses is Jesus' maternal uncle he is the brother of Jesus' mother if the Quran is right so yes you're correct on that point the Quran confuses Mary the sister of Moses with Mary the mother of the Lord Jesus Christ and if Muslims want to try to provide an explanation to explain the serious historical uh, anachronistic you know, error, feel free to call. Did you want to add something, brother? Uh, well, the, 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 uh, the next point was about uh, miracles and how we believe in Jesus and how we believe in Muhammad. Uh, Jesus lived the most miraculous life in history from beginning to end. He's, uh, he's born of a virgin, so he had a miraculous beginning. Um, during his earthly ministry, it was miracle after miracle, as even Muslims will admit, even Jesus' enemies in his time were admitting that he was performing supernatural acts. They simply said, ah, he must be doing it by the power of the devil, by the power of Beelzebub. Uh, so even his enemies were admitting that he was uh, performing miraculous acts. And then, of course, 
uh, the miracle of all miracles, Jesus rises from the dead. He conquers the grave. So Jesus, from beginning to end, lives a miraculous life. We get to Muhammad, we find a man who can't perform any miracles and can't provide uh, any evidence that he is a prophet. And yet what he says contradicts the message of Jesus. So we're stuck with a very interesting problem here, but a very simple one. If Jesus lived the most miraculous life in history, Muhammad couldn't perform any miracles and couldn't give any evidence that he's a prophet of God, who am I going to listen to? Yeah. Why, in the name of common sense, would you choose the man who couldn't give any evidence versus the man who lived the most miraculous life in history? We, this show is called Jesus or Muhammad. Isn't it obvious? Amen. Isn't it Jesus. obvious who we should go with? I'm, if I'm going to listen to anyone tell me about God, I'm going to listen to the man who rose from the dead. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And just uh, for the Christians and the Muslims, if you want to go back and read in the Old Testament, where it says that Moses' father was Amram, uh, and that he had a sister named um, Mary, uh, you can look at Numbers chapter 26, verses 58 to 59. Numbers chapter 26, verses 58 to 59, specifically verse 59. I'm going to read it. But you can write this down, and you can go read it, and when you have time, or if you have a Bible in front of you, you can turn there to see that the Quran is confused, the identity of the sister of Moses with the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Eternal Son. These also were Levite clans, the Libnite clan, the uh, Hebronite clan, the Mahalite clan, the Mushite clan, and the Korahite clan. Kohath was the forefather of Emram. Don't forget the name. Imran in Arabic, Emram here. The name of Emram's wife was Yochabed, a daughter of Levi, right, who was born to Levi in Egypt. To Emram, the wife of Emram, bore him, she bore him, Aaron, Moses, and their sister Miriam. Did you notice that? Amram's wife bore Miriam, Aaron, and Moses. Aaron being the oldest. I'm sorry, Miriam being the oldest. I apologize. She's the oldest. Then Aaron, then Moses, who is the youngest. So according to the Bible, the only sister of Aaron, the only daughter of Amram, whose mother was the wife of Amram, is the sister of Moses, not the mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So just wanted to confirm, Numbers 26, verses 58 to 59. Okay, so for our Muslim viewers, before we go to break, you know, again, Sam and David are demonstrating how Islam is not a religion of peace by your own verses. Can you prove the other? I mean, can you prove that Islam is a religion of peace? Can you provide facts? Can you provide verses in context? Can you prove both of these individuals wrong? Because no one's called so far, and we're waiting for you. So call us at 248 416-1300. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. We'll take your calls. Enjoy watching Jesus or Muhammad, please contact us and let us know. We need your prayers and your financial support to keep this program on the air. Give us a call at 248 416 1300. 